Hi again, everyone. It's Miss Courtney, and we're back with Russell Prather in question number two. For our second question, I've asked Russell Prather where he makes his art, and he was kind enough to show us. Hi, everybody. I was just relaxing at home. I thought you might be interested to know where it is I make my art, so I'm going to take you for a tour of my studio. My workspace is in two parts. This room is full of books and paintings and sculptures and weird little objects that I've acquired here and there. And I fill this room with all of these things to think about and to, to look at. Um, so that it can give me inspiration as I'm trying to figure out what kind of work I should make and how I should, how I should go about making it. So here is my chair. That's where I sit and read. This is what I'm reading right now, but I can't tell you about it because uh, I've just started it. And then I thought I'd show you some other things that I've been reading. This is a collection of 11th century paintings from Persia, which of course is now the country called Iran. This is a book full of work by William Blake, the, the great 18th, 19th century British painter, poet. This is the first art book I ever got as a gift, long time ago, and I still look at it every now and then. It's a book about René Magritte, who is the Belgian surrealist painter. And I'm sure you guys know this guy, Andy Warhol, um, the pop artist who became famous in the 1960s. So if you look around, you'll see there are paintings on the walls and also masks. There's a mask made out of crow feathers and there's some more masks here. Most of the masks I have are from Mexico. I just find them, I don't wear all of them, but I do find them really strange and interesting and fun to look at. And then this is also a painting from Mexico and the reason it's so shiny is because it was painted on a big piece of metal. And then here we have, oh look, cats. Well, that reminds me to, to show you my greatest inspiration, and that is Lola, my cat. She's napping. Let's see if we can get her to look in the camera. Lola, what's going on? How are you? Okay, she's very, very sleepy. We should probably just leave her alone. All right, so moving right along, I have a shelf here that I put stuff on, things that I'm in, in uh, the process of completing. And I just have them up on the shelf sitting so I can look at them and think about what I want to do with them next in order to complete them. Then there's a piece here that I'm almost finished. It's down here. The reason it's so bright is because it's sitting on top of a light box. This one is pretty much done. I just need to bolt it all together. So you can see here that there are multiple layers that the piece consists of. It's about 10 inches deep and it's got about 20 layers. Well, I paint all those layers by hand and the place where I do that is this little painting station here. To paint all these layers takes a long time. So I spend a lot of time in this little cubby hole um, I usually put on an audiobook or some music and I just sit and paint and paint. This is a template that I use to, to guide my painting and I've got a couple more here taped on the window for easy access. And then I also have my paints lined up here. Um, they're all in those plastic bottles. All right, so that is part one of my studio tour. It's part two of the studio tour. 
This is a standing room only room. That is, there are no chairs. You can't sit down in here. They're just tables, these high tables. There's one, there's two, and there's a third one down there. Over here we have uh, various supplies. There's uh, bottles of the paint that I use to make the pieces. And then here, a bunch of the acrylic ink, acrylic ink that I use to uh, tint the medium that I paint with. And then up here, there's some hardware and more paint and more paint and shelves of stuff, some old pieces that I'm storing and some plexiglass and some aluminum screen frames and a whole bunch of stuff. I just finished a bunch of paintings and so here in the sink, I am in the process of rinsing out a bunch of paint bottles now that I'm done with them. And that's why it's such a mess in there. So if you remember in the, the last tour, I was talking about how much time I spend painting because each of my pieces consists of multiple layers and each one gets hand painted. So these are some of these layers. And the reason that they're in here is that uh, when I paint them, I need to put them on a level surface, i.e. the tables, and let them dry for three or four days. Uh, so they just, I close the door so Lola, my cat, can't come in and then just let these, these things dry. Another way that I use this room is to test hang pieces that I'm in the process of making, that I'm almost done. So you can see I put this metal grid on the ceiling so that I can hang things really easily. So here is a piece, uh, it looks a little like, a uh, looks a lot like half of a piece that is in the Muskegon Art Museum right now, Museum of Art right now, uh, the one called Pink Pillow. This one doesn't have a title yet, but it's different from Pink Pillow, not on the outside, but on the inside. It's this sort of empty cavity, if you can see that. There's a little um, too much reflection to see that clearly, but um, there's, there's something going on in there. Now over here is a piece that I am just in the process of finishing, this big orange monstrosity. I think it's gonna be called Melon and I have hung it because I'm trying to figure out what I should, well, I want to see what it looks like, and I want to figure out what I should do with it next. Um, so that's another thing that I do in this room is I, I put things up and then I look at them and I try and figure out if they work and if they don't work, how I can make them work. So that is part two of my studio tour. Wasn't that cool? Now you can say you've seen an artist's studio, and maybe you'll be inspired to make your own special space to create art at home. For questions 1 through 3 with Russell Prather, as well as more hashtag SSFromHome materials and educational fun, visit our website at www.muskeganartmuseum.org education. This program was made possible by the generosity of our sponsors at Art Bridges and Helmet Aerospace. Thank you.